This video is less about Phantom Liberty's story and the content that we can expect from it, and it's more specifically about why I think it's going to be successful despite the public's long-standing opinions of Cyberpunk 2077. As most of you are aware, Cyberpunk's launch was terrible. What was sold to consumers, you, me, and others, is not what we were expecting in terms of how the game was going to play. It seems that a change in the ideals for the game changed midway through. There was a lot of overhype, both from the community and from the devs kind of hyping up the game themselves. It was riddled with a large number of varying bugs, especially for folks who were on console. I hear it was less so on PC. There were some story issues because the main story sort of betrays the idea that you'll want to do any side quests since you're constantly chasing not dying to this disease in your head. Last issue I'm going to point out is there were balancing issues that also made the game just not fun. Now, as this continued, there seemed to be a large number of problems before the game finally was in both a playable state and then an entertaining state where they fixed a lot of bugs and added things to make the game more seamless. I say all of this not to beat a dead horse and complain about the launch, but simply to put into perspective where the community's opinions and thoughts were about the game. Now, with this being said, it did very harshly tarnish the reputation that CD Projekt Red had spent so long building up within the community. I myself had a much lower opinion of them and was really concerned about whether or not I'd even want to play future releases. Then we look at something like The Witcher 3. It was more than fans were expecting to get. I think even the wildest believer of fans was super impressed by this game, myself included. It had incredible open world, setting the stage in many ways for future open world games. It became the standard. It had fantastic narrative that was just super appealing to the audience, pulling you in. You always wanted to talk to somebody new to see what you might be able to uncover, and it was almost always very satisfying. Not to mention, they had a large variety of high-quality enemies pulling you into the combat system where it wasn't incredibly varied, but it was super fun to deal with. I mean, regardless, you were going to be fighting them with swords, but somehow it, I never thought about it like that. I just thought about how I'm going to take on the next monster and the number of ways you can try. I draw this comparison because we as a community know they are capable of making these high-quality, entertaining games. They need to take their time and put it out when it's finished. I think dropping the last gen consoles will also help them, it's not going to hold them back. As a matter of fact, they've upped the spec requirements because of the fact that they're trying to take it up a notch. It's also likely going to be less buggy after learning from their experience with previous bug testers, and hopefully they're doing a better job with that this time around. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. They're also, to help compensate for some of the issues still in Cyberpunk, pushing out a new massive update, which is also going to add to the overall enthusiasm and positive outlook on the update that we can expect with the DLC. I think that this update is really going to help the game in so many ways, and it's going to attract people back to the game, or people who may have been reluctant to spend money on the game may try it out now. The update touches on the combat system, with weapon damage being adjusted, armor being focused more on cyberware as opposed to clothing, which is a cool way so that way you can focus on fashion versus, oh, I'm going to take less damage from X enemies. Also limitations on how much cyberware can be worn and retweaks to the cyberware, whatever that means. Improvements to the enemy AI, which just is a general plus regardless of how you play the game. And they're overhauling the police system. While I understand a lot of this is overdue, I do really think that CDPR is doing a great job building up hype for the game as well as general interest. With the DLC launching around the time that this update's going to come out, and it's likely going to be adding new and interesting content as there's potential to cure V's disease, I think this does grab people in a way that even players like myself who are very cautious about all of this are incredibly intrigued. The trailers were fantastically well done, they show enough leaving us with food to eat, but it's drip fed in a way that leaves a strong air of mystique and intrigue. The visual quality, as per usual, is very well done. 
It seems that CDPR kind of has a consistent hold on making sure that the visuals always look good. I have not played a game by them that I wasn't entertained by. Now in fairness, I've only played Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk, but I was blown away visually by both of them. Also, this DLC has an entirely different tone than the main story did, as it's a spy thriller that sort of gives you this vibe of not knowing who to trust. Almost everyone's your enemy, but anybody could really be your friend and you're kind of on edge trying to overanalyze everybody. Also, with the Witcher games, the DLC was often heralded as the best part of the game. And the sentiment I've seen from many players is that it was their favorite part overall. It really was super fun to just kind of jump in and go through all of this extra new game-like content. My take on CDPR is that they, generally speaking, have learned their lesson. I'm not saying that they're entirely reformed and they're going to come back and be perfect. I'm simply saying that I think that they're not going to make as many of these huge mistakes bringing down the quality of their game. I'm guessing that they're going to be taking their time a little bit more. Now, this is just my opinion. Obviously, only time will tell. They do, however, seem to be a bit more willing to show off some of the specifics when it comes to what we can expect to come in the new update, whereas things were hidden away and swept under the rug a bit with the release, especially as it pertained to the console issues that pretty much everyone who was playing the game on console realized immediately. They're also not seeming to be overhyping the DLC and expansion, but more so leaning on the community's natural excitement and interest versus blowing things out of proportion, which is something I felt they did with the original launch of the game. These are people who have made the Witcher series and have had a great track record and trust from the community up until this game. I do not by any stretch think they are beyond a comeback. In fact, I also think that a very successful release for this update will largely build back some of that trust and admiration the community, and myself to be honest, had for them. My main concern with the update and how it will affect Phantom Liberty is that if it's rushed at all, and not very well crafted, going a little above and beyond that, it will sort of blend into the background, presenting as a slightly more in-depth version of what modders have already done. A commenter on my review of the Cyberpunk Thing mod pack pointed out that a lot of the things the mod pack does will be included with the new update. And while I hope that's the case, and I hope it's done well, I am worried that this update won't take the next step by making some of the additions that I would expect from some larger teams of developers with all of the talent that CDPR has. Overall, I am very optimistic and will be covering the update as well as the DLC when it releases. What are your thoughts on Phantom Liberty? Are you going to be coming back to the game to try it out because of your intrigue and interest? Or are you someone who still plays the game and you're just eager for more and interesting content? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, consider subscribing, above all, stay safe.